It's just, it's so meal. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I was starting to talk to you in French because I have a very special guest today. But before we go into special guesting, I have to apologize for the sound that might be in the background. So for those of you who are going to jump in just now <laughs> and you were part of the, you know, internal kitchen of lives on StreamYard, well, we apologize for the inconvenience and how does it get any better than that? So welcome everybody, I'll start it again. You know, I take a deep breath. <sighs> welcome everybody. This is the third episode of Uplifters, the show dedicated to those absolutely gorgeous, fabulous people who are willing to spread consciousness and bring a ray of life a, a ray of light in people's lives. Today I have a wonderful, gorgeous guest, and I'm going to put my ears on so that on. And my guest today is Jacinta de Souza. Am I saying it correctly? Because I yes, normally say Jacinta. <laughs> <laughs> and I will have to tell you a story about her. She's normally very quiet. <laughs> She's the you know the quiet potency in the background. She's not saying much, but everywhere she is, people know that. And there is a very interesting story that we would like to share with you today. And you will know hmm, my main reason why I chose Jacinta to be one of my guests. Everything started like when, Jacinta? In March 2019? Uh, 2019, was it? Yes. It was the beginning of the lockdown. 2020, right? 20. No, 19. Yes. 19 or 20? 20, I think. 20. Because, yes, yes. You're right. But it's because it's COVID-19. Well, exactly. I made it 2019. Yes. <laughs> Who counts? Who cares? It's not, the date is not important. So, I'll tell you this. When everybody was fearing, when everybody was looking down at life when everybody was worried no. Jacinta wasn't so Jacinta who are you what are you doing uh, and tell us what happened in March 2020 <laughs> so we have a small family business we make cookies uh, we make and sell cookies um, and during the confinement, uh, we were one of the few businesses who could still remain open and who could still move around because we were considered essential. <laughs> so we usually don't deliver cookies, but then we decided that this was a good moment to, to do home deliveries. And uh, so we announced that on the website and it was amazing the amount of people who wanted not only the cookies, but a little bit of a contact with somebody else, somebody more than their little bubble of uh, people at home. Yeah, if I if I recall it, you were my first visitor ever. <laughs> we ordered cookies to have you around. <laughs> well, we started the thing and then we realized that we actually had to program more time for each delivery because... People would just start talking to us at the door. We'd be there with our masks. They'd have their masks. And then they would start talking about what was going on. And you really could tell that they were in need of, uh, of contact and wanted to talk. And so we decided to just leave extra time on the days that we did delivery and spend that time, whether it was 10 minutes or a half an hour, uh, and, and talk to people because... Uh, we realized that we were doing more than just bringing cookies. <laughs> we were actually bringing a bit of our extra contact into people's lives. <laughs> what were you talking about, Jacinta? What were, what were the topics that these people were interested in? Well, mainly it was they would uh, explain their experiences. It was such a new experience for everyone, this being locked down, not being able to do things, and people just wanted to share. So basically, it was that sharing their experiences, and uh, yes, <laughs> it, it, we had a lot of new clients. We had a lot of old clients who kept asking us to come back. It was it was very interesting. <laughs> yes. 
we were asking them to come back and actually there was celebration on the street where we were seeing their car driving on the on the street and parking in front of the street we knew we knew that there were the cookies it was, wasn't only the cookies but okay tell us about the cookies how did you start with the why cookies why why not i don't know what i know, wait wait a minute you're also making that orange syrup cake or whatever that is it's, 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 it's a it's a magical something that turns your life into rainbows the moment that you have it in your mouth that's that's uh, we we did that later we added cakes later we started out with cook actually i came to belgium of uh, almost 30 years ago and when i arrived where there, from I... where from wait a minute you came to belgium oh. but where were you uh, we were in africa in the congo and uh, because there was a civil war there we had to just leave uh, from one day to the next basically we came to belgium thinking it would be just for a little while but then things never got better so we did what we had to do to be able to stay in belgium and at that time i had noticed that cookies were something that just didn't exist anywhere in belgium i had spent a lot of time in the states uh, when i was younger and it came into my head that that's something that could really work but at the time 30 years ago you had to have a shop or you had to have a store and i didn't really want to get into all of that it was complicated so i did a lot of other things in the meantime and then about eight years ago i decided okay now it's time for the cookies to start and we just started with a website uh, and from there it just we started with one or two small orders and then it just went on and now we are <laughs> Pretty much. Do, do you, do, <laughs> do you remember? Do you remember the first try, the first cookies? How were they? Because the I'm, I'm, I, I can tell you how the cookies are now, but how were they in the beginning? The, well, to begin off with, so I had this old recipe that was from my mother, actually, the the basic cookie recipe, and which I used to do a lot to give as gifts to friends, and there were there were always cookies in the house. Um, but then to sell, uh, we, we needed different varieties, so we had to do a lot of testing to to add different kinds of chocolate, to add nuts, to add things. Because the, the basic cookie recipe was the classic cookie recipe, which in the family, that's the only one they want. They don't want anything else. <laughs> is it also a, a family secret or is it just, is it something that you share or is it I now the... I used to share it, I don't anymore. <laughs> Oh, now it became a business. We don't share. <laughs> but I find I find it funny because cookies are just. I know you told me once the story, like one year back or two years back. You told me the story of how you were also making food and you going going to the festivals, and you also had shops, and you also had a lot. Of, so this is not new to you. It's just that this is like, how should I say? This is owned to you now with the cookies. But your human experience with food and being around people and comforting people has starting a long way back. Oh, can you can you can you tell can you walk us on that path? That would be fun. Well, I've always done a lot with food. Uh... Already with my parents, my father was a diplomat, so we always entertained a lot at home and we used to do most of the stuff uh, on our own. My mom was a great cook, so I spent hours with her in the kitchen and uh, learned a lot of the basis of what I know now from her. Um, and then in, in, when we were in the Congo, I had, uh, I had opened a service traiteur, a catering service. Um, so we used to do cocktails and receptions there for uh, for anyone who wanted. Uh, we worked with a lot of embassies and things like that uh, there. And when I came here in Belgium, it's a little more difficult to open a big company and hire people. So we used to just do it on an order basis. We used to um, do meals, uh, a lot of Indian meals, because that's what it was different and what people were looking for. So yes. what, what is it? What is it with the food and people? What is it? What is it? What, what is your take on this? <laughs> are people more open to new stuff, or are people more open to connecting to each other? What is this thing with the food and it's people? A, it's a kind of way of caring for people, and yeah, it, it, it's something that uh, when you're around a table with a good meal, 
you feel comfortable, you open up, you take the time to talk. It, it was one of the ways we got to know people here also in Belgium because um, when we came, we, we knew nobody. And so we were very used to inviting people always. Uh, so I used to just invite people and they were always a bit surprised because we didn't know them very well. But the only way to get to know a person is actually to have a meal around the table and I would just come wow. home and we have a meal. And... Uh, we made a lot this of is, friends that way. This is a, a, a totally new take for me. Because I, I will I have a confession to make. I don't like cooking. <laughs> but I like eating. <laughs> well that's so, the case is, <laughs> so I mean it takes people to eat and it takes people who like cooking exactly, to make the yes. best recipe, right? <laughs> But there is something special about the way you are presenting the food and you are delivering it. There is a special ingredient there. I know everybody is speaking, yes, you put your love, you put your... No, what is it that you really put inside? Because your food is always exquisite. Be it Indian, be it normal, be it like a... Oh, I remember, remember, there was a class. For those of you who don't know Access Consciousness, we are kind of you know, doing stuff in excess consciousness, just go check it out. We are actually now, both of us, in the castle in Italy, in the Castello di Casal Borgone, attending a three-day body class with Kalpana Raghuraman. And the thing is, I'm in the library in the castle, and she's in one of the private rooms, <laughs> one room. level downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is, um, at some point, we were, you were hosting a class. A facelift class. Yes, yes. And I came to the class and I was like, okay, I'll take the class. But it, I didn't know why I took it. I mean, it wasn't the first, it wasn't the second, it was the ixiest class. <laughs> but when I sat at your table, I knew why I had to take the class. You <laughs> had prepared such a wonderful, delightful table. I, I couldn't, I, I couldn't, I could literally couldn't touch anything because I was so, wow, somebody's inviting me to this <laughs> celebration. It was, it was everything was, was thought into details and, and it looked like something very, you know, normal for you it and for me. Food. It wasn't anything very complicated, but I do, I, it, it's something I enjoy. I really enjoy doing that setting a nice table, and taking care of the presentation. It, it's, those are things that I really enjoy. And I think when, when, you, when you like what you do, then you just put your heart into it and you do it, right? And how do you, how do you respond to people when they love what they find in front of their eyes? What does that make to you? Oh, it makes me feel good. It makes me feel like, yes, that like, we, we were able to share something and it's really nice, yes. Well, is this the, you know, is this the thing with the gifting and receiving at the same yes, time? Absolutely. Is this what yes, yes, yes. It's a, it, it's a sharing. It's a, because yes, we, in what, what I do, I, I receive also. And uh, like I said, it's been the basis of so many friendships. Uh, even many of my clients now are, are, are very good friends or have become very good friends. Uh, it's it's been really a pathway to to a different way of life. It's uh, I love it's, that. It's really cool. <laughs> but I still remember the first time that you that during the confinement that you were allowed to travel, like to move around. Yes. And you came to our place. <laughs> I remember the kids seeing you at the door and saying, "Mom, somebody's at the door." <laughs> It was <laughs> I I get it I get the chills actually. You were that ray of light, you know, that bringing in like oh. Well, it was easy, super easy for us also because there were just no cars anywhere, so we could really go anywhere in Belgium within within an hour or so. It was not a problem, and and yes, we we could see because we used to come with our masks, and they had told us you have to leave the box at the door and then move back, ring the bell, move back, wait till the person comes and gets it. And we would do that, but then the person would be yelling at us from the door, <laughs> speaking and stuff. And finally, we would come a little bit closer and it would end up with a full conversation. It was, it was a very interesting time. Yes, we had a lot of fun. <laughs> and it's not only that, because if you look at this, 
the cookie was just a pretext to yes, sure. yes. to yes. know that you are cared and somebody cares about you. <laughs> Even if many of these people were just like strangers, random strangers with a Even with an order. Everybody had something to say. Yes. Yes. Everybody had something to say. <laughs> To what was the most the time. what was the most interesting thing that you heard from people? Tell us a story. Tell us a funny story about <laughs> what people were talking about or what happened, you know, in front of the door while uh funny story. Uh... Or something that touched you or something that stays with you. Well, what was what was touching was the amount of people who, because they themselves couldn't move, would ask us then to take things for their older relatives, their their parents or their kids who were far away because for their birthdays they couldn't go and wish them, and uh, that that was yeah that was very touching for us because you could see that people suffered a lot from that not being able to go and visit. I mean, not being able to go and see your daughter on her birthday to to take something yourself and wish her, and then they would pass through us. We had a lot of orders like that where uh, we were the intermediary and we we did the gifting uh, for uh, yeah. for these people. Yes, yes. The delivery of the soul, <laughs> the heart and loving soul of others. This yes, is. Exactly. I, I I'm not sure whether you whether you grasp the magnitude of this because when i hear you it's like oh but it's normal we would do that for everybody it wasn't normal and it will never be normal but it will always be magical it became magical it's true that when we set out doing it we were like let's just try and we see what happens but then it, it really did become magical and we had uh, it, it it was fun it was really fun to do the deliveries yes <laughs> And I know, I know one thing. So you do the deliveries. It started. It really started to grow into a magical thing on all levels mm -hmm. during this confinement. But you are also present every Sunday, right? You are at, at markets. Yeah, not every Sunday, but uh, regularly on Sundays we do different markets. Yes, yes. <laughs> so what is what happens there? What is how how do people approach you there? Do they also, do they come to you as like oh you were the ones who came to us or is totally random people just coming and tasting those absolutely fabulous cookies? <laughs> There's a bit of both. We have this little cookie van, like a food truck, a tiny little food truck, where we have all our varieties of cookies. We have twelve varieties now, and. Uh, Every time I'm I'm on a market, I announce it on Facebook so so people know where we are. And yes, we do have. Uh, for, for example, uh, a few weeks ago, we were in Liège, uh, which is where we lived when we first came to Belgium. We lived in Liège for three years, so we have a lot of friends there. And when I announced it on Facebook, uh, they all saw it. And in fact, we spent a wonderful day just meeting so many old friends who just came to see us they they, they bought cookies yes but we we <laughs> we spent the whole day with friends actually <laughs> on top of the others who were there for the event but um it's what, yeah, what? You know, and we we do we do private events also so it's uh, with that what with that what thing, was the move around. you know what was the main pretext the cookies which which sort of cookies which one was the main pretext? Because I know you just brought on the market the coffee one, which is my favorite all times. For if people know me, they know that me and coffee, um, yes. <laughs> what is what is the cookie that sells the best right now? Uh, well, I think the classic one has always been the one that sells the best, the classic one with chocolate chips. But uh, we have one that is with white chocolate and cashews, which is... Uh, very special and which people really enjoy and then recently we brought out so the coffee one but we've also brought out one with ginger and black chocolate and this was one of um, my clients who proposed that i do that one with uh, black chocolate and red chili powder oh which i, I haven't like, tried mm, that one i yeah no you haven't tried that one yet <laughs> now I, I i would let's have a deal when you come to belgium when you go back home, 
Yes. You come and deliver. I will do that. <laughs> Chili <Yes>. pepper, cookies. <laughs> but I, I also would like you, if you want, if you agree, to tell us a bit about not only the cookies, but what else are you doing on a regular basis? It's you, the one who's going to, to bring it up to the people. It's not me. So what else are you doing? Well, I work a lot uh, with, with work. With my daughter, who uh, five years ago opened uh, a nonprofit organization called Unless uh, to help the, the homeless in Brussels. And so with that organization, we provide about 150 meals, three times a week, hot meals for, uh, for just anyone on the road or anyone who needs a meal. Uh, we have a, a place where we st stop at the central station and uh, people know that we're there from six to 7.30 and they, they can come and pick up a hot meal. And, uh, and there again, the hot meal, yes, they need it. But with, with the people who work with us, with our volunteers, we really explain that it's not only the hot meal, it's really that moment of contact. It's the moment where they can spend a bit of time speaking to people where there's somebody who will listen to them for a little while. So we really tell our volunteers not to feel like they're doing nothing when they're standing over there, to really take the time, even if it's just one person you speak to, you might make a difference to that person's life. You may be the only person who spoke to him on that day. And uh, yes, so that's, uh, I, I do spend a lot of time volunteering there. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I, I, I yeah. Mm -hmm. So for those of you who don't know Michelle and who don't know Unless, uh, somewhere in March this year or February, I did a video with her, nice. uh, one, two, three, from idea to actualize reality. Uh, I'm really inviting you to check the YouTube uh, video with her. You will get really inspired. And back then I couldn't get Yacinta to talk to me because she was shy. But now I caught her and <laughs> munching the biscuit, <laughs> the cookie, and I won't let her go until she tells us what what would you really like to to create in the world, Yacinta? What is it that really makes you, you know, step out of the bed in the morning and you say, okay, this. What is it? What would you like? What? Why are you doing all this? What is it? You know, it's like some people can look at it and say, oh, well, but I have to do it. Or this is my mission or this is my purpose in life. Or why do you do that? It's, it's not the uh, why in the sense of reason and justification or yeah. what moves you? What makes you sing? <laughs> um. I really think it's the contact with people because I do enjoy, and that's, as you say, I am a little shy and that's my one way of, of connecting with people. And it's something that I love doing. So I love sharing what I can do. And yes, being with people really makes me happy. So if just by doing small things, a lot of small things. I, I, I don't know about changing the world, but I, I really feel that small moments in different people's lives can make that change. Uh, just a, a conversation or sharing a cup of coffee or uh, just even, yeah, like during the confinement, a, a five minute conversation on the road. Uh, those are the simple things that we're losing more and more. People don't have time anymore. Or when you're sitting at a table with someone, everyone is on their their phones. In the trains, we used to, before when we took a train, we used to talk to the people around us. Nobody does that anymore. Everyone is sitting there on their phones. And it's really to come back to just the simple things of life, which makes all the difference, I think. <laughs> it does. It, it surely and certainly did a difference in my life. <laughs> and I'm not sure whether I told you ever or not, but you know, I took a little table from you um, well, to that class, you know, remember yes, I was yes, telling yes. the class, you were having these beautiful lower tables with glass on them. And I don't know why I looked at it and I said, I want one of them and say, okay, you have it. <laughs> and I looked at, are you serious? Yeah, you can have it. 
just put it in your car. And I took it home. And every time I get into my living room, there's this, oh, it feels like home. And it's a simple table. Yes, but it comes the thing, just simple things. Uh... With you and with the ease of sharing and finding it important for other people to, you know, to enjoy the yes, things around. It is, it and is every time you come, every time you come to us for a coffee, I'm so proud of showing you your table. <laughs> 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 wow. So, Jacinta, if there were something that you could, how should I say, you would like to live in people's worlds today about who you are, what you are, where you're going, what you're, what, how you're going there. <laughs> what would you like to leave with them? It's just one day at a time, one minute at a time, actually. <laughs> Do I know where I'm going? <laughs> we'll see where we're going, right? <laughs> so you don't have plans? I don't have plans as such. No, no. Things, things change all the time and we change with them. I mean, when the confinement came, we changed with so many things and uh, every day things are changing. Someone says, how about you try this? We try this. Um, it's the chance meetings with people, the chance conversations that you happen to have and you then you go a whole different way, which I realized I used to be somebody that planned everything with everything was written down and okay, this is what I'm going to do this month and I have to achieve this. And I always ended up with a sense of frustration because I wouldn't achieve half of what I had said I was going to do. And in the end, what does it matter? You just <laughs> do what you can and that's it, right? How as much long as more you're happy. enjoying and having fun. That's, uh, and it's really more and more about that, having fun with whatever you're doing. It's Tell me more. Eliminating, and I have done a lot of that, eliminating everything that is not fun. <gasps> How do you do that? <laughs> well, things that you don't want to do, people that you don't really want to see. That sometimes you just, you invite people just out of politeness. I, I do that less and less, almost no more, because it's not interesting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> politeness. Oh. I know what you're saying. Those moments when you would like to say no, but it comes out as a yes. And at the end of the day, you say no to yourself. It still happens. It still happens. But I'm working on it. So you're not yet a saint, right? Oh, my goodness. No. I'm just kidding. But I really have a an interesting time imagining you not saying no <laughs> to people who who require you in their lives you don't always have to say no you can just avoid the question sometimes <laughs> so... <laughs> oh, I love this. well if you were ever thinking that uplifters are always having um, their ducks on the row and they know exactly <laughs> what they're doing well this 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 myth has gone long by but thank you so 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 much Jacinta thank for, you. Thank you for having me sharing so this <laughs> and you. you know what I'm always saying that this this I, I started this project to somehow invite everybody to look at where they are uplifters in their own lives mm -hmm. and what if they acknowledge that and then, you know, inspire like you inspired me and you inspired so many other people to be more present in their lives and bring more conscious choices in the world. I wonder where, where this earth would go if we were willing yes, to be yes. joy and fun and lightness and, hey, enjoy cookies. <laughs> <laughs> Jacinta, just before we go, where do people find your beautiful cookies? Just because I know there might be some, I know you also deliver uh, international right now. We, right? we do send, send everything internationally also. So we, you, you can go on our website. It's uh, cookiesbelgium.com. Uh, and everything is there and you can always send us an email the the, the address is on the website and uh, if you have any questions just don't hesitate to contact us there's an email and a phone number on the website uh, so that's cookiesbelgium.com 
And you're not only going to get the cookies, you're also going to get a wonderful chat with Jacinta. And I'm like, mm, <laughs> how did we get so lucky? <laughs> well, Jacinta, thank you so, so, so much. Thank you, <laughs> thank everybody you, who... Selena. Thank you for having me. <laughs> thank you, everybody who have watched now, who will watch in the future. Yes, thank you, Michelle. Michelle is watching. And for those of you who are inspired and know that there are people around you, who are those uplifters that you know made a change in your life, let me know. I would be honored and delighted to have them as my guests. And how does it get any better than that? Kisses and hugs from Italy, from Casal Borgone. Jacinta, let's have a cookie and a coffee downstairs in the restaurant. <laughs> See you soon. Bye. Bye, everybody.